Hello, everybody. This is Steve Marinucci, freelance writer on Billboard.com, Variety.com, and Goldmine, welcoming you to another Beatle News Brief. This edition is dated November 10th and 11th, 2018, and we're doing a weekend review. The long-awaited 50th anniversary White Album box sets were released on Friday. Hopefully most of you have them by now. The rollout includes... Included a, com- a TV commercial that was shown on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert on Friday night. And the Beatles portraits were also seen in lights uh, in uh, New York's Times Square. Um, and this weekend was also the Big White Album Symposium at Monmouth University with uh, Ken Womack, Alan Cosen, Mark Lewison, and a whole bunch of other Beatles scholars. We also put out a special Beatle News Brief show on Thursday, um, all about the new White Album set. It featured uh, Beatle News author Candy Leonard and myself reviewing the set. And the show also included uh, interviews with authors Ken Mansfield and Brian Southall, and a very special interview I did with Giles Martin in Los Angeles in, in the Capitol Records Tower. We hope you won't miss it. It's on iTunes, YouTube, Podbean, and wherever podcasts can be found. And speaking of the White Album again, um, the UK Guardian put up their original review of the album from 1968, written by Jeffrey Cannon. And it, we were reading through it, and it actually was uh, pretty accurate, and it had this great sentence that, really was kind of intuitive, said, although the Beatles have several hints of separation, it's what they share that makes the album great, and the Beatles is our new spring. There's no way verbally to capture such music. It's the sound that counts. It's somewhat prof- prophetic, too. Um, then there's the Rolling Stone interview, which we happened to d- dig up because we wanted to see what Rolling Stone did. Rolling Stone review was not as not as good, let's put it that way. Um, it was written by Jan Wenner. And this uh, this sentence kind of says quite a bit. It says, Just a slightly closer look shows it to be a far more deliberate, self-conscious, pretentious, organized and structured, coherent and full, and then in italics, he says, more perfect album than Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Talk about pretentious. Um, he also blows the name of a couple of the songs. He calls uh, the continuing story of Bungalow Bill just Bungalow Bill, and he calls Glass Onion looking through a glass onion. Oh well, anyway. That's on their website if you care to look look for it. Uh, Paul McCartney set watch. He played two shows uh, November 5th at the Royaguku Coco Koku Geeken, sorry, I have to, that's a tough one to pronounce, in Tokyo on November 5th. And then on November 8th, he he played at a more easily pronounced place, uh, the Nagoya Dome in Nagoya, Japan. Um, The show on November 5th was shorter than usual. It had 31 songs as opposed to 37. Um... At November 8th. Um, the songs he left out of the November 5th show are uh, Who Cares, Got to Get You Into My Life, Let Him In, Maybe I'm Amazed, Here Today, and Eleanor Rigby. Um, it had all the, basically all the other songs, so, uh, uh, with one exception, um, which I'll, I'll get to in a second. Um, the show on November 8th uh, had. Uh, those songs I, I did not me- I, I just mentioned added in to the set list. Plus, uh, the f- first show in the encore was Birthday. Uh, the first show in the encore on the 5th was I Saw Her Standing There. And that was also the same situation with the show on November 1st and November 8th, and the November 1st shows were somewhat parallel. So, there we go. Um... There's a great story by Susan Suzanne Axelbank, A X E L B A N K, on www.thisisthebronx.info called Paul McCartney and Me, and it talks about her experiences seeing Paul McCartney not only this year 
but in years past. And also John Lennon, too. So anyway, that's an interesting, it's a, a good little story. You might want to look that one up. Uh, our friend Rick Holland uh, was involved with the, uh, a recreation of the Two Virgins covered by artists Gemma Hunt and Paul Collado in London at uh, 32 Montague Square, November 1st, uh, where the original photos were taken. Um, you can see uncensored photos of the recreation on Twitter on Rick's account. That's Rick Holland. Uh, this Sunday on Breakfast with the Beatles, uh, Luis Enrique Lopez of the show tells us that um, special guest will be Lawrence Juber. Uh, and that's KLOS at 9 a.m. Pacific Time. The show is available online and through various apps. I think TuneIn is one of them. But it is available online for those of you not in the Los Angeles area. Uh, the Irish News reported this week that a plaque to mark the Beatles' only Dublin performance was to be unveiled, unveiled in the city on November 7th. They said the band played two performances at the Adelphi Cinema on November 7th, 1963, and more than a dozen men were arrested when fights erupted after thousands gathered to see the two evening shows. Interesting. Um, for those of you uh, to, who want to set your DVRs uh, on uh, Access TV, uh, November 11th to, at 5 p.m. and 12.30 a.m. Eastern Time. They'll be showing the Imagine John Lennon 75th Anniversary Concert. Partial list of performers are Cheryl Crow, John Fogarty, Peter Frampton, Chris Christopherson, Willie Nelson, The Roots, Chris Stapleton, and Steven Tyler. Look back in history. November 10th, 1967, the Beatles filmed three videos for Hello Goodbye at Seville Theatre in London. November 11, 1965, the final recording session for the Beatles' Rubber Soul album took place at Abbey Road. They recorded You Won't See Me and Girl. Uh, born on this date, uh, born on November 10th, uh, 1948, was uh, Greg Lake, uh, who played uh, briefly with uh, Ringo's All-Stars. Albums released on this date uh, 50 years ago, on November 11th, the Two Virgins album. That's it today. Um, you can hear the show in heavy rotation on Fab4 Radio. On, and, uh, or, um, it's also on YouTube, uh, iTunes, or wherever you get podcasts, and also on Google Play. Um, you can send your comments to beetlenewsdesk at gmail.com or leave them on YouTube. Please subscribe wherever you get your, wherever you get the show. We'd love to have you subscribe so you can get first word of the show when it's on line. On Facebook, also please take a look at our That's What I Want Beatles store. It has links for things you might be interested in. Until this next time, this is Steve Marinucci saying, Now it's time to say goodnight, goodnight, and sleep tight. that one market fab